most of us can relate to this time of Advent, the lead up to Christmas, being a time of preparation. Many of us are buying last minute presents, attending gatherings with work colleagues, friends and family members, finishing up jobs at home and work that need to be completed before the break, and of course reviewing the menu for the Christmas feast. And amidst all of this, it can be easy even for active Christians to overlook putting aside time to consider how we might prepare for the celebration of the arrival of the God child into the world, to contemplate the incredible humility of God, who is timeless, uncreated, unlimited, but decided to be born as one of us. When we say the creed, our profession of faith at every Mass, we're asked to bow our heads, not when we state that Jesus died, but rather when we mention him being conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, to humble ourselves before this great act of God's loving humility. We see in the Gospels that John the Baptist had a role to prepare people for the coming of Jesus' earthly ministry. John the Baptist repeats the Old Testament prophecy about a time to come when ground will be made level and paths straight. In biblical terms, these words are metaphors for the change that needs to happen in the lives of individuals and in communities. The repentance preached by John was not meant to cause the community to be moping about, dismayed by their sinfulness, but rather for the community to take a good, hard look at its system of values and its priorities. The call he made back then, which still holds true today, is to be willing to make a radical change of attitude, where necessary, in readiness for the coming of Jesus. John was a radical character with a radical message, a message that God was present amongst them in human appearance. John's vocation was one of proclamation of the Messiah, and just as John had a God-given vocation, so do all of us. For some of us, it is as a spouse or parent. For some, it is religious life or ordained ministry. But we could say that these are all just different slices of the pie which makes up the vocation we all have, that is, of living as disciples of Jesus Christ. I encourage you to read the papal document on the Year of Mercy. Pope Francis states, in words addressed to every member of the Church, these words. The Church is commissioned to announce the mercy of God, the beating heart of the Gospel, which, in its own way, must penetrate the heart and mind of every person. The spouse of Christ, the Church, must pattern her behaviour after the Son of God, who went out to everyone without exception. It is absolutely essential for the Church and for the credibility of her message that she herself live and testify to mercy. Her language and her gestures must transmit mercy so as to touch the hearts of all people and inspire them once more to find the road that leads to the Father. In our parishes, communities, associations and movements, in a word, wherever there are Christians, everyone should find an oasis of mercy. So that's our challenge from Pope Francis as we commence the year of mercy, as we finalise our preparations for the season of Christmas. A significant part of our vocation as Christians is to be people of mercy. Jesus himself told us that if we want to receive God's mercy, we must ourselves be people of mercy. Can we contemplate how we might take up this challenge? Let's first acknowledge where we already do exercise mercy, but can we also consider those areas where we have further work to do in being people of mercy? Can we consider what we can do to help our community, our church, our nation, our university be beacons of mercy? Can we take a first step today on living this vocation of mercy more fully so as to help us arrive at Christmas and the new year more fully prepared for the feast of God's great mercy.